I could while away the hours conferring with the flowers, consulting with the Alright, on my last video I kind of showed this method of calculating the kilowatt hours based on entering your average mean wind speed for your area and then over here selecting one of several wind turbines that are on the market so that you can determine uh, what your uh, annual production is. So I can just change this value here in this spot to go from like the example here with the, the drone generating 1542 kilowatt hours in a year to maybe the Windura 750 at 513 or the HY400 at 357. I've added a new one here. I've got the data now for the Winmax HY1000. It's a turbine that's a little bit uh, larger than uh, these other ones, but it's a little smaller than the Wintura, but it has really an excellent design. It's number six here. I plug that in here, you can see it comes out at 737. So then given that information, I can enter, for each of the turbine types, I can enter a different uh, mean value, like from eight miles per hour up to, uh, let's say, 15 miles an hour, and create a table to be able to generate a graph um, from to determine based on the wind turbine that you're going to use what the expected uh, performance would be. So that way you could apply it to your particular area. Let's go take a look at that chart. Alright, so here's the data for each of the six turbines that I've looked at here and then here's the miles per hour average mean for your area and this is what it comes out as far as the kilowatts per year for each of the different types. If I take that data and plot it out on a chart here, you can see our 8 miles per hour up to 15 is in here. And then we have our car PMA on the bottom, followed by the HY400, the TLG, the Windy Nation, the Winmax uh, 1000, and then the drone up on top. And then I have the numbers from the table in here for 12 miles an hour just as a reference. Now if I go back to the table here, just kind of put some numbers against this. Let's say that we have this Winmax 1000 generating at 12 miles an hour is our area generating 1636 kilowatt hours a year. Let's say we're paying 12 cents per kilowatt hour. That would be equivalent to about $196 per year saved. And then if you're paid $899 for the turbine, the payback for the turbine would be about four and a half years. So then if I then look at the other end of the table here where we have the car PMAs and this could be a wind blue or a thermodyne or even some of the cheaper brands out there you'll be generating up to maybe about 389 kilowatt hours in a year and uh, at 12 kilowatt 12 cents per kilowatt hour you'll save about 46 dollars and if you pay on average about $5.99 for that turbine, it'll take you 14.6 years to pay that off, just the turbine part. You know, for most people, they're going to look at these uh, kilowatt hours over here, which are, you know, can generally shave some pretty good money off each of your monthly bills throughout the year and kind of be focusing on some of these uh, more efficient but uh, slightly more expensive units that are on the market. The other thing I can do with this data is I can generate another table that is uh, comparing the different wind turbines based on how high they are off the ground. The data that I just showed you was all the turbines were basically at 10 meters off the ground which is where the data originally was collected from for the wind speed for the area. So now I have it so that it is adjustable based on the turbine feet above the ground. So you can see that if you don't have it very high above the ground, you're going to suffer in your kilowatt hour uh, output of it, which is something we've discussed before. It's called wind gradient. And so this will help you determine based on the turbine type that you're looking at of you know what the trade-off is for kilowatt hours per year based on how high you go. It's kind of all shown just in this one table here. The other part one I showed this basically this uh, list of cities and their average wind speeds. I imported it into a spreadsheet and then sorted it by annual wind speed. And you can see 
the uh, the highest wind speed is at Mount Washington, which is a tall mountain in New Hampshire. They have a heliport on the top. Uh, these ones in the pink are in Alaska, so that's 13 mile an hour average wind speed. These gray ones are in the Pacific Southwest. They're basically islands, but you can see the majority of higher wind sites that are at 12 miles an hour or higher tend to be in the Midwest. Uh, you get more down into the East Coast and that it starts to get averaging more 11s and 10s. Minneapolis here we're at 10 and a half in the upper Midwest. Uh, so you can go through this uh, list online and find out what it is for your area. And you can see there are a lot of places in the country that the wind is definitely on average below 10 miles an hour. So it's pretty important to get a wind turbine that is able to work some of this low wind if the cut-in speed of the turbine itself is up in that 12 and 13 miles an hour you're really not going to be able to take advantage of any of this uh, lower speed wind that's most likely in your area. Alright, hope that gave somebody some good information about where how to proceed and uh, we'll talk to you later.